The city's handling of COVID-19 patients enters a new phase. Some employees worry they may risk a pay cut after the scrapping of isolation orders for people infected with COVID. And Cathay Pacific and Hong Kong Express to cut some flights between Hong Kong and Japan between this Friday and early March. Hello and welcome to TVB News. Starting today, isolation orders and designated clinics for COVID patients will no longer be used. The government will only release the number of PCR positive cases on its website. Those who test positive and wish to see a doctor must visit private clinics or the hospital authority's general outpatient clinics. Sharon Tang has more. Things are perhaps a lot different from now on if one tests positive for the coronavirus. First of all, no more mandatory isolation. As the government encourages COVID patients to seek help from private doctors, we reached out to 10 private clinics in one district, and most of them said they will receive patients with COVID symptoms. But two clinics asked COVID patients not to go there. Instead, the nurses said they can tell doctors how they feel through the phone or find someone to deliver medicines to them. According to a government website, infected people can get COVID oral pills from 548 clinics around town. Family doctor Lam Wing Wo said he understands why some doctors refuse to diagnose COVID patients at the clinics. He said the floor area of a clinic is usually small, which makes it hard to implement pandemic control measures. He added that some doctors may be extra cautious because of their age. Those who wish to seek medical help from the hospital authority's general outpatient clinics must make an appointment via the HA Go app or through one of the seven care booking hotlines. But one hotline noted the quota for the day is already full. Also starting today, authorities will no longer announce the number of new infections via press releases. Instead, they will only release the number of PCR positive cases as well as death cases from time to time. The latest figures on the website show there are 358 new infections and five more deaths. Experts worry the data does not reveal all infection figures in the city, which makes it difficult for residents to know the actual pandemic situation. Meanwhile, all designated clinics for infected people have resumed general outpatient services. COVID patients and those who are not infected had to register at two separate locations. They were handled by two different groups of doctors. But all patients were seen waiting for medication at the same pharmacy of the outpatient clinic. Staff members told us they will speed up the work for COVID patients to minimize the risk of transmission in the area. Sharon Tang, TVB News. After dropping the city's mandatory isolation orders, some unions are worried that employees may risk a pay cut if they contract COVID-19. Christy Khan reports. Starting today, people who have been diagnosed with COVID no longer need to undergo isolation or report their infection. According to the government's latest guidelines, infected people are eligible to go to work and walk among the community if they are asymptomatic. Some employees say they haven't received any internal guidelines from companies. But this construction worker says she will go to work if conditions allow, adding she is paid on a daily basis. If employees infected by COVID want to ask for paid sick leave, they must obtain a medical certificate, according to government's policies. Employers must also pay the infected employees if they want staff to resume work after obtaining a negative result. However, a labor union representative emphasizes that paid sick leave may not be sufficient compensation for the losses infected workers may have suffered. Tam Kamlin, the vice chairperson of the Federation of Hong Kong and Kowloon Labor Unions, says employees may lose their monthly attendance bonus if they take sick leave. She adds that they must also cover medical costs themselves after the isolation order is dropped, resulting in more expenses. Meanwhile, the Social Welfare Department has announced that they will stop accepting applications for the $5,000 cash allowance for COVID-19 patients from February 14th. Christy Khan, TVB News. 
China's National Health Commission said the overall pandemic situation in the country is at a low prevalence level. The NHC said today that pandemic prevention and control were steady and orderly during the spring festival holidays, with a steady downtrend seen in various places. Authorities also claim the pandemic peaked at the end of last year. On December 22nd last year, a record high 7.2 million people tested positive using either an RAT or PCR. But citizens testing positive using PCR tests fell drastically to 15,000 on the same day one month later. Cathay Pacific Airways and Hong Kong Express announced today they would once again cut some flights between Hong Kong and Japan from this Friday to the beginning of March. This is due to the continued restrictions imposed by the Japanese government. More than 150 flights will be affected. Mimo Singai has more. Between February 3rd and March 2nd, residents who wish to visit Japan or have already bought tickets to go there might face some inconveniences again. Cafe Pacific announced earlier today that certain flights between Hong Kong and Japan will be cancelled. These include flights to and from Tokyo Narita, Osaka Kansai, Nagoya Chubu and Fukuoka. According to the airline, there will only be 72 flights operating to Japan per week, 12 to 13 fewer flights for the month of February. The city's low-cost airline, also owned by Cafe Pacific, Hong Kong Express, followed this lead by cutting 15 flights to Japan per week. Cafe Pacific made such a decision in January, resulting from the partial limitations that the Japanese government imposed on the city, which is a limited number of inbound flights could land in Japan. Meanwhile, the Consumer Council said a total of 70 complaints related to Japanese air tickets were received in the past two months, involving $710,000. More than 50 complaints had to do with contract changes or terminations, while the rest were refund disputes. The council reminded the public that each airline has different ticket refund policies, so one should pay attention to the terms and conditions before purchasing any tickets. Mimus Nai, TVB News. Two foreigners have been found dead after an avalanche while backcountry skiing in the Japanese prefecture of Nagano. The men were part of a group of five engulfed by Sunday's avalanche that occurred around 2.30 in the afternoon on the eastern side of Mount Hakuba Norikura. Media reported that the dead men were an Austrian and an American. Rescuers are trying to bring the bodies off the mountain, which is at an altitude of roughly 2,500 meters. The other three skiers were in a separate group and managed to get off the mountain by themselves. Avalanche warnings had been issued after a heavy snowfall. Russia launched missile attacks on a number of cities in Ukraine as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called for more weapons and faster delivery. Ukraine's Ministry of Health released pictures showing what it says is the aftermath of Russian shelling of a hospital in Kherson. They say three people were killed by the Russian strikes on the southern city of Kherson, which Ukrainian troops recaptured in November. In Kharkiv, officials say a Russian missile hit an apartment building, killing at least one person and injuring three others. Zelensky said Ukraine was facing a very tough situation and needed faster weapon supplies and new types of weaponry. He said Russia is trying to exhaust Ukrainian troops in the east and his forces, therefore, were in urgent need of weapons. The U.S. and Germany said they would supply main battle tanks to Ukraine, but that may take months. Turkey's president has suggested his country might approve Finland's application for NATO membership before taking any action on Sweden's. This while the Turkish government issued a travel warning for European countries due to anti-Turkish demonstrations and what it described as Islamophobia. The travel warning published late Saturday followed demonstrations outside the Turkish embassy in Sweden where activists burned the Koran. This has stiffened Turkey's refusal to ratify Sweden's NATO bid. 
Sweden and Finland jointly applied to become members of the military alliance, dropping their long-standing military non-alignment following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In South Korea, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg urged the country Monday to increase military support to Ukraine. He also said it was important to engage China on issues such as arms control, climate change and other issues at a time when China poses a challenge to security. This as U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin arrived in Seoul today for talks with his South Korean counterpart. Tracy Furness has more. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg met with South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin in Seoul today. South Korea is the first stop of a trip that will take the NATO Secretary General to Japan. The visit is aimed at strengthening ties with the U.S. allies in the face of war in Ukraine and rising competition from China. Stoltenberg urged South Korea to increase military support to Ukraine. Park cited the country has provided hundreds of tanks to NATO member Poland since the war began, but said that South Korea cannot provide weapons to countries in conflicts. Stoltenberg urged Seoul to change its policy as other countries have done. He also said that China was much higher on NATO's agenda, citing Beijing's rise in military capabilities and coercive behaviors in the region. We believe that we should engage with China on issues like arms control, climate change and other issues. But at the same time, we are very clear that China poses a challenge to our values, to our interests and to our security, he said. The Chinese foreign ministry has previously said that Stoltenberg made reckless comments on China's political and domestic and foreign policies, as well as promoting a China threat theory, which China firmly opposes. Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin arrived in Seoul today for talks with his South Korean counterpart Lee jong suk The U.S. Department of Defense said Austin will also visit the Philippines to continue efforts to strengthen the security environment in the region. The Biden administration has indicated its intention to deepen regional treaty alliances with South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Australia and Thailand for a free and open Indo-Pacific and to balance Chinese influence in the region. Tracy Furness, TVB News. Still ahead, a shipboard fire off Lama Island leaves one man dead. And Shenzhen designates four civil service openings for Hong Kong and Macau applicants in its latest recruitment drive. Crewman died after a fire broke out on board a cargo ship in waters off Lama Island. Fireboats were deployed to extinguish the blaze. Firefighters later boarded the cargo ship to investigate the cause of the fire. The government flying service also joined in in the rescue operation. The fire broke out when the ship was offshore the Lama power station at 8.46 this morning. A 51-year-old crewman died and 12 other crew members were rescued from the ship. The Environment and Ecology Bureau says it has implemented a series of measures to help reduce landfill odor around the landfill in Ta Ku Ling. Secretary for Environment and Ecology Tse Chin Wan says the authorities will expedite the construction of the city's second waste incinerator, but it will take at least seven years according to the government's plan. In a Legislative Council meeting today, the Environment and Ecology Bureau explained that it has been spraying extra levels of posi shell cover to reduce odor emission at the landfill in Ta Ku Ling since late 2021. Additionally, the operating hours of the landfill have been shortened since December 2021. 16 more deodorizers were installed in late 2021 with an effective control range of around 350 meters each. But lawmakers were not satisfied with these control measures.
when we complained about the uh, smell, again, is up to national standard. I think the standards are one thing, but the fact is uh, they are still stinky. So what can you do about that? We are not talking about a situation where you cannot detect the odor at all. By fulfilling the national standard, it doesn't mean that you cannot smell any odor at all, but that it is barely detectable. The government has unveiled more details about its light public housing project, including the locations and the construction cost. The eight sites that have been selected for the project are located in Tun Mun, Yunlong, Sheng Shui, Kai Tak, Ngao Tao Kok, Chai Wan, and Sui Lam. The light public housing units will be built in phases, and the first batch of 17,000 housing units will be provided in 2024 to 2025. At the earliest, the second batch of 13,000 housing units will be available in 2027 at the earliest. The size of flats will range from about 13 to 31 square meters. Secretary for Housing Winnie Ho today said the authorities have changed the design of the project to cut the construction cost. Each flat will have its own toilet, shower area and cooking space. Each unit will have a water heater and an exhaust fan, but no air conditioner. This is to bring down the cost of the project, saving millions, according to the authorities. And four more civil service positions in Shenzhen are now open to Hong Kong and Macau residents. The Shenzhen government is recruiting 805 civil servants. Four of the positions available are designated for Hong Kong and Macau residents. The positions include two judicial assistants, one legal affairs officer and a law enforcement officer of the Shenzhen Yantiang District Zhongyingji Management Bureau. Applicants must be Chinese nationals aged no more than 35, have at least a bachelor's degree and vow to uphold the constitution and the communist leadership. They should not have any foreign nationality, nor should they have a so-called Huko under the mainland's household registration system. Those interested have until next Monday to apply. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Up next is the final episode of Money Matters. See you then. Bye for now.